Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation from BMO 2009. BMO stands for British Math Olympiads. All right, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. Now, functional equations are kind of fun. Uh, don't get frustrated because sometimes they look complicated. And this one is uh, probably could be considered an easier one. Anyways, we have f of x times f of y on the left hand side and we have the f of x plus y plus xy on the right hand side. So we're going to be finding the functions that satisfy this and f is defined from real numbers to real numbers. Great. So we're going to start and this is kind of like a general strategy for most functional equations. We're going to start by replacing um, x or y with 0 because f of 0 plays an important role uh, in functional equations. So let's go ahead and replace y with 0. And then this gives us f of x times f of 0 equals f of x plus 0, which is f of x. And then this becomes just plus 0. The reason why I wrote the 0 is because I'm going to subtract f of x. So you can kind of see that the 0 is going to be left uh, over on the right hand side. So this is going to give us f of x times f of 0 minus f of x equals 0. Awesome. Now, my goal is to find f of x, but I'm not going to find it from here, but I'll find some uh, useful information. So let's go ahead and take out f of x because f of x is a common factor. And inside the parentheses, we find f of 0 minus 1 equals 0. You know, zero product property when you have a product that is equal to 0, either factor uh, can be zero. It can be both as well, but we don't know. We have to look at each case. So from here we get two uh, possibilities. Either f of x is zero, but when I say f of x equals zero, I'm not talking about a particular value, but more like uh, it's equivalent to zero. It's, so it's kind of like a zero for all x values. And then the other possibility from here is f of zero minus one equals zero. And this means f of 0 equals 1. So at least one of these ha have, uh, has to be true. But here's the problem. The first case is impossible. And why is it impossible? Let's take a look at that. In the original problem, remember it was f of x times f of y equals f of x plus y plus xy. If you replace um, x and y with 1 at the same time, because it's from reals to reals, you can pretty much use any value here, you're going to get f of 1 squared equals f of 2 plus 1. Now, if f of x is identically 0, then you're going to run into a problem because this is going to be 0, and it's going to be 0, but 0 equals 1, that's not true. So the first case scenario is not going to work. Therefore, we have to go with the second one, which means f of 0 equals 1. All right, awesome. This is a good finding. Let's go ahead and hold on to it and let's see what we can do next. So now, in the original equation, I'm going to replace x with 1 and y with negative 1. Hopefully you have a copy of the original because I don't really want to write the equation every time. Not because I'm lazy, but it's kind of boring, I guess. So anyways, replace x with 1 and y with negative 1. You get f of 1 times f of negative 1 equals... Now, if you look at the original problem, you're going to notice that uh, you get inside the parentheses here uh, in f of x plus y, you get f of 0. So that's kind of like the motivation behind replacing x and y with opposite values because you're going to get f of 0 on the right hand side and you do know what f of 0 is. We know that f of 0 is equal to 1. So we're going to replace f of 0 with 1 here and that's going to give us f of 1 times f of negative 1 is equal to 0. Awesome. This is a really good finding. Because, again, by zero product property, uh, one of these has to be zero. But do we know which one? No, not really. You can go to the original problem. You can replace x with, you know, 1 and 1. But that's not going to help us. As you've seen before, It's we have to deal with f of 2. You can do 1 and negative 1. But we already did that. So it's not going to give us anything additional. Anyway, so here's what we need to do. Uh, we have to look at both cases. So suppose, suppose, 
f of 1 is equal to 0. Now this is uh, going to give us a solution and now we're going to look at the second case. Now, if f of 1 is equal to 0, I'm going to replace x with z minus 1 and the reason behind this is I don't want to use y or x again. You could, I mean it doesn't, like it's no big deal, but I just want to use a different variable. And we can always convert something like f of z to f of x easily because we can replace z with x. Awesome. Now in the original problem, remember, we have f of x times f of y, so it's going to be f of z minus 1 times f of y is going to be f of 1 equals f of, now you add x plus y, you're going to get z, and then plus xy, which is the product, that's going to be z minus 1. Now this is really cool because f of 1 is equal to 0. That's what's really cool about it. So now we can uh, replace f of 1 with 0, and that's going to give us 0 on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and write the right-hand side on the left-hand side, and the left-hand side on the right-hand side. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So this is going to give us f of z plus z minus 1 equals 0. Yay! This is beautiful because this gives us f of z as 1 minus z. And from here, obviously, we can find f of x by replacing z with x. So don't worry about all these replacements because these are dummy variables that are just dummies and we get f of x equals 1 minus x as a solution. And definitely you can verify that f of 1 is equal to 0, but again, this is if f of 1 is equal to 0. Now, suppose f of negative 1 is equal to 0, and let's see if we can find a different solution from here. If f of 1 or f of, f of negative 1 equal, equals 0, then I'm going to replace x with t plus 1, and y with negative 1. And of course, there is a motivation behind this because I want there is sum to be a variable like t or z. And I want to take advantage of the fact that f of negative 1 is equal to 0. So that's the motivation. f of t plus 1 multiplied by f of negative 1 equals f of t plus 1 minus 1, which is t plus t plus 1 multiplied by negative 1. That's going to be negative t minus 1. Awesome. But f of negative 1 is equal to 0 because that was our initial assumption. So we now have f of t minus t minus 1 equals 0. And from here we get f of t is equal to t plus 1. And again, you can verify that f of negative 1 is equal to 0 here if you plug in t equals negative 1. All right, great. Now, what am I going to do? I want to find f of x. Therefore, I can write it as x plus 1. So we got two solutions. Basically, one of them was 1 minus x, the other one is x plus 1. And, or you can write this as negative x plus 1. Or you can say plus minus x plus 1, our family of solutions. But guess what? If you go ahead and use these values, just kind of plug into the original, you're going to notice that they satisfy the original system as well. And there are no other solutions because we looked at all the cases. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.